I just want to talk about your website a little bit today. And before I talk about it, let me give you my disclaimer that yes, I am a lawyer and I'm a lawyer licensed in Texas. And the information that I'm sharing with you is just for the purposes of information and educational purposes only. This is not meant to create an attorney client relationship, nor is it meant to create any type of privilege and it's not legal advice either. It is literally generic and it can apply to any business out there. So here we go. Number one thing that you need to have on your website is a privacy policy, not only because it's required, but also because you should tell people how you're using their information. What I mean by information is a personal information. And what does personal information mean? Personal information means their name, their age, their gender, their credit card number, all of their personal information that you're gathering from them, their likes and their dislikes, or any other information that is privy to them, but you're collecting it, has to be disclosed to your user, the person that is getting on your website, and either they're perusing it, purchasing, downloading, whatever they might be doing on their website. But you need to let them know how you're collecting that information, you need to let them know why you're collecting that information. You also need to know what you're going to do with that information. And also you need to let them know if you're giving it to any third party, whether you're selling it or whether you're just sharing it with a third party. Those are some of the main factors that you need to include in your privacy policy. Make sure you follow it too. Make sure you're not just sharing that information just for the sake of sharing it and to be in compliance, but really follow the way you do uh, present yourself on how your privacy policy is. So number two, after privacy policy is your terms and condition. Now the terms and condition of your website is essentially laying the lay of the land of your website. So you wanna let people know how to use your website, what they can do on your website, what is allowed and what is not allowed, and not only just your website, but it also describes your company. What comprises of the company? Is it just your website? Or does that include your social media platforms also? Or any other way that you are representing yourself on the internet? So if they are accessing you, but you also have like other subsidiaries, you may want to include that as well. So you need to define what company means, but you also want to say to them or share with your user what they can do on it. So what that includes usually is the products that you're selling or the products that they're getting for free or any type of, even if it's just a blog that you have and it's, you know, a blogging website, but the information that you're sharing on there, if you have any affiliate links or if you have any sponsor links or if you have any of that stuff, that needs to be disclosed. Now that goes into your disclosures. So essentially it's, you know, you are telling them what's included in your offerings, what services you have, what comprises of your company, your refund and exchange policy, your intellectual property notice. You wanna let them know, can they use your pictures? Can they share? Or if they can, then how can they share? So just kind of giving them some guidance. So they also are in violation of your rules of your business. So you can also give some guidance if someone's not violating it either. And then also your disclaimers and your disclosures. So say for example, you're a health website, a health and nutrition website, but you're not a doctor. You wanna disclose that. You wanna sh share that you're not a doctor, disclose that, and disclaim also that you're giving any type of doctor advice, any type of medical advice. If they do need to seek medical attention that they should talk to their doctors or they should talk to an expert in that area. So that's your terms and condition. Number three is the cookies. So cookies is like small little bits of information that are collected as you're on a website. And a lot of website hosts already have a cookies policy embedded into your website. But just make sure it resonates with your business and it is something that you are doing in your business. Well, it doesn't have to be an affirmative act of yes, I accept your cookies, but that's a good practice where they're affirmatively accepting the cookies on your website and they don't have to, and it's okay. And it's okay also for you not to give them access to every single part of your website then, because at the end of the day, there are certain parts of the website that does require personal information. And if they're not okay with it, that's totally fine, but they also have to be okay with not being able to access every single portion of your website. I hope that makes sense. And so just make sure that you know, if you're using a platform and they give you a cookie or if there's a built-in cookie from your web developer or web designer, just make sure it resonates with your business and also have an affirmative action there. It's not required, but it's a good practice because one day it will be required and you're already ahead of the curve. So number four is have the privacy policy 
and the terms and condition easily accessible. And so this is really important because if it's not easily accessible and if it's hidden on your website, then that could be bad for you. So you wanna make sure that you have it visible and easily attainable for your user. And so that can be, you know, on the bottom, it's okay, but it has to be there. It can't just be like small little side note or a footnote, but it should be something that they can easily access. And then when they are purchasing or downloading or doing any affirmative action where they are literally disclosing all this information to you and giving their name even, even their name, just their name even, the simple act of giving a name, that you should have affirmative check boxes there as well to say that they have read your privacy policy and they agree with your privacy policy and they are okay with it. And also that the terms and condition that they agree with it and they are okay with it. Now with the terms and condition and privacy policy, you know, you can have on your website saying that the fact they're even using it shows that you're agreeing with it, which is fine. But when you have those affirmative check boxes, it gives you three things. One, it gives acknowledgement that they have read it and they have seen it. Two, it gives an agreement that they agree with it. And that's like saying they're contractually binding themselves to it, saying that I agree with it. And three is that you've given them notice also that you are sharing that notice with them and you're telling them, hey, just in case if you missed it in X, Y, and Z points, I'm now giving it to you one more time before you do this final purchase or final download or opt-in or whatever you're offering where you're extracting information from them. Number six, copyright notice. So what I mean by that is on your website, have a circle with the C in it to let them know that this is yours and have the dates for which your website have been live. And you can even say all rights reserved if that's something that you wanna share with them as well. You don't have to do it to show that it's yours. You don't have to do it to claim a stake. However, doing it gives another sense of affirmation and further edifies your copyright in it. It's not required, it's not required to protect yourself, but definitely it adds an extra layer of notice, which is really nice sometimes because sometimes people don't know, but when they see that, they know what copyright means, right? So it's really nice to have that extra layer of notice. And security protection, number seven. Depending on where you're hosting your website, and how you're hosting your website and the information that you're extracting. So seven and eight kind of go with that is security notice and third parties that you're working with. You want to make sure that the platforms you're using, the host that you're using, or somebody that you're using to process your payments, that their security systems and their measures are in place, that they're protecting you and they're also protecting your clients or your users. And they're protecting you from hackers, they're also protecting you from other type of breaches of security, because honestly, that's a huge issue right now. The last thing you want is someone to breach or hack into your website and take all that information. So just make sure that that is somehow protected and you are doing whatever you can do in your means to like have that protection there. So I hope this was helpful. If you have any other questions, please send me a DM, send me a message, and I'd love to chat with you further. Bye.